speak to you about the power of the anointing. The power of the anointing. Now, those who have followed me of late, they have seen that I've been posting so much about the anointing and not of late. I've been posting all my life because I have been in the house of God for many years, serving God now. And also, I received a call, the call of God when I was really young. And so, I have learned the art of seeking God that he may give me the anointing. Because without the anointing, really, um, you will just be an empty vessel. Empty vessel, why? You just be a noisemaker. It's just like a container that has nothing inside. When, uh, um, when you see a container or a cup, when somebody, when you go to a hotel and ask for a cup of tea, what do you think if they brought you an empty cup? The cup, yes, is a cup that uh, carries tea and uh, sh the, the, the waiter, the waitress is carrying the, the tea also in a small uh, container, but he has not put the tea on your cup. What do you think? You will stay with an empty cup until there is a content put inside. Child of God. That is the same analogy we have. If you are saved, if you are serving God, but without the anointing, you're just an empty, uh, noisy container. What makes the difference is the content, not the container. The container is good to carry, but the content inside makes a difference. Like, like now, this one is um, a bottle of water. The blood of this water is what we see outside, but I can decide to remove this one and put a different content. What is inside is what matters, not what is written outside. Now, you are a container child of God, but what is a content? The content is the anointing. When you carry the anointing of the Holy Spirit in your life, that is what makes the difference. That is what people see. That's why we have many servants of God who carry different, different contents. There are some people who carry contents of teaching. Some people carry the contents of preaching. Others are evangelistic. Others are prophetic. Others are healers. Others are revivalists. Others are worshipers. Others are singers. So that's the content that comes from within. My question to you is simple. What is the content that you carry? What content do you carry? It's good to go to the Holy Spirit and ask him, Holy Spirit, what is the content that you have put in my life, in my spirit? Praise the name of Jesus. Anointing is powerful. Anointing is awesome. Anointing is fantastic. Anointing is... A, special, anointing is peculiar, anointing is critical, anointing is paramount, <laughs> anointing is mandatory. You cannot do without it. Anointing is compulsory. You must have the anointing because that is what makes the difference. I pray that as I preach the word of God today, you shall receive the anointing. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, the word of God says in 1 Samuel chapter 10 verses 6 and 7, we see God instructing the man of God, the prophet Samuel, to go and anoint somebody by the name of Saul. Why should Saul be anointed to become the king? He must be empowered. Anointing empowers. It must be set apart. Anointing sets apart. It must be elevated. Anointing elevates. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, so Samuel goes to the house of 
if we meet this man called Saul, who has been looking for the donkeys of a father, you know the story, for three days, and then God says to Samuel, go and say to him that the donkeys that he is looking for for three days have been found. They have been found. Therefore, actually, we are looking for somebody now who can be the king of Israel because the children of Israel have asked for it and we have to give it to them. Now, the Lord has chosen you, Saul, to be the next king. Actually, to be the king, the first king of Israel was Saul. It was not the intention of God. It was the intention of men because God was to be their king forever. But they rejected the king Jesus, the king Adonai, the king Elohim, the king Yahweh, and they now want a human king. So God gives it to them. He was not the best king. That is not our subject today. Our subject is, subject is to see why the anointing. And what did the anointing do when it came upon him? And so someone meets him with a vial of oil, took the vial, put the oil, and went out to meet Saul. And when he met him, he began to speak the word of God. You can see that there was all Samuel put a vial of water in verse, of oil in verses one and poured it upon the head of and kissed him and said, "It's not the, it, because that I have explained. God has made you a captain over his inheritance." My verse is verse six. The Bible says the power of the anointing comes here now. The Bible says in verses five, and that that thou shalt come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines, and it shall come to pass when thou art come thither to the city, that thou shalt meet the company of prophets coming down from the high place with a satyry and a tablet and a pipe and a harp before them, and they shall prophesy. Samuel says to Saul, you shall go, you shall meet these prophets, and they will be carrying a satyry, a tablet, a pipe, and a harp, and they shall prophesy. They shall prophesy. Praise the name of Jesus. But something shall happen when they begin to prophesy. That company of the prophets, when begin, they begin to prophesy, something will happen. The Bible says, And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you. And you shall prophesy with them and shall be turned into another man. Verse 7, Let it be when these signs are come unto thee, that thou shalt do as the occasion serve thee, for God is with thee. Powerful, powerful, powerful words from the prophet of God, the prophet called Samuel. He is saying to him some powerful words. You will go, you will meet these prophets coming down, and as they are coming down, they will be carrying a satyr, they will be coming a pipe, they will be carrying a tablet, they will be coming, in other words, they are carrying some musical instruments with them, a harp, and they shall begin to prophesy. The Bible says, so, someone says, you shall prophesy with them, because the Spirit of God shall come upon you, and you shall prophesy with them. You shall prophesy with them. Wow. And the Bible says, also, you shall be turned into another man. And then he says, these signs, when you see these signs being fulfilled, do as the occasion deserves, for God is with you. Powerful, powerful, powerful words. We can pick out some things here. And we'll bring them to you now. So that you may know why the anointing. Why should the man of God speak all these things to Saul, the king of Israel? Why should they, why, why are all these things happening? Number one. Number two. Why should God send someone to go and anoint Saul to be the king? Why should, why can't God say just let him be the king, I have chosen him, and no need of the anointing. That is the praise of the anointing. And I have seen it of late that when, I, when, when people post about the anointing, people fight it a lot. Because the, the, when it is from God, people must fight it. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, there are three things you can pick up very, very fast from this poem. The power of the anointing. 
One, we can see very clearly that it is through the anointing that gifts and talents are empowered. Gifts and talents are empowered when you are anointed. You may have a talent, you may have a gift, but without the anointing, it will not be effective. That is what we say. The Spirit of God shall come upon you and you shall prophesy. We have never seen Saul prophesying before, but now when the anointing comes upon his life, that gift will be activated. The gift will be activated. The gift will be effective. The gift will be empowered. I pray today in the name of Jesus Christ, your talent, your gift, your career is going to be empowered by the virtue of this anointing that I'm speaking about. Receive the anointing to empower your gift, to empower your talent, to empower your ministry, to empower what you are doing, to empower your career. Receive the anointing. Receive the anointing, child of God. Receive the anointing in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of the Lord. You need the anointing. For your marriage, to keep your marriage, you need the anointing. To keep your business, you need the anointing. To keep your ministry, you need the anointing. You cannot do without the anointing. The anointing is the power of the Holy Spirit. When the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be empowered in your area of talent and gift. That is what we see. Already saw is ready to prophesy. If you read down there, he will meet you, this puppy, and he will begin to prophesy with them. He will begin to prophesy with them. That is number one. Number two, it is the anointing that effects greatness. Anointing effects greatness. Anointing effects greatness. Hey, praise the name of Jesus. The Bible says, thou shalt be turned into another man. He. You shall be turned into another man. It is the anointing that turns people to other men. I was a scorer. I was just a normal person doing some normal things that other people do. I was not nasty. I was not wicked. I have I loved God. I, I feared the Lord. I mean, uh, I, 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 I have been raised in a Christian family. I feared God. I've been taught values and virtues and, uh, and morals. But something happened when I received the anointing. Something happened when I received the anointing. I was turned into another man. That is what the nations are looking for. The nations are looking for people that are transformed. Not people who can speak very well. No. Not for, uh, for people who look very good. No. They are looking for people who have a deposit of God in them. That deposit is the anointing. The anointing is what affects all these things. It is the anointing that makes you great. The anointing makes you great. Anointing makes you great. Anointing makes you great. This man is now beginning to prophesy. And number two is being turned into another man. Somebody who could not prophesy can prophesy. Somebody who could not preach can preach. Somebody who could not intercede for hours can intercede by the power of the anointing. Somebody who could not do business can do business by the power of the anointing. Somebody who could not be able to translate and do interpretation in church can do it by the power of the anointing. Somebody who could not pray for people now can pray for people and be healed because of the power of the anointing. That is the power of the anointing. That is the power of the anointing. You cannot do without the anointing. You cannot do without the anointing. You cannot do without the anointing. Jesus did not do anything without the anointing. He was first of all filled with the Holy Ghost. Then he went to preach. You must be empowered. Filled. He told his disciples, do not leave Jerusalem until you are empowered. Until you are endued with the power from on high. That's the power of the anointing. Until you are anointed, go nowhere. Child of God, you cannot achieve anything without the anointing. That is why I speak passionately about the anointing. You can do nothing without the anointing. It is not a grammar. It is not a, a, an orator. It is not all these things people need. People need a man who is anointed or a woman who is anointed. That's all people are looking for. Praise God. Number three, it will affect your success. People begin things, but how many things succeed? People begin ministries. People begin businesses, people begin marriages, but how many of those marriages and businesses and ministries and careers succeed? Very few of them. You need the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon your life to effect your success. Look at what the Bible says. Verse 7, let it be when these signs are 
come unto thee that thou doest as occasion says for God is with you. In other words, whatever you will put your hand to do from now, henceforth, it shall succeed. It shall succeed because God is with you. God is with you. God is with you. When the anointing is upon you, many of your things succeed. Oh God. Like, like I, I see every time I pray for people, they are healed. I don't, I don't struggle to pray for them. I don't have to do some drama and some uh, 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 gymnastics. No, I don't do that. I just release the word of God upon people. And the power of anointing of the Holy Spirit begins to heal them. Some people ask me, how does a miracle happen? And my answer is simple. I don't know. I don't know how a miracle happens. Because I've never seen a miracle happening. It is the distraction of people that I, I, I look at and what happened there, something happened there, something happened there, something happened there. I don't know. I don't know how it happens. But I know something. The power of the anointing when it is at work, miracles happen. I don't struggle. I don't get it tired. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't uh, involve myself a lot. No, I just release myself and I release the Holy Spirit upon people. The power of the anointing does things. Things succeed. I've seen the cripples walk. I've seen bright eyes open. I've, I've, I've seen deaf ears opened. I've seen many, many form of miracles. Cancerous wounds healed. I have seen tumors healed. All by the power of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You cannot do anything without the anointing. You need the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon your life. Until the anointing came upon Peter, he kept denying people he was a fearful man. But when the anointing came upon him in Pentecost, he was the man that preached and 3,000 people all were converted in a single meeting. Without microphones, without instruments, he preached out his word, the word of God. Without reading the Bible, he started narrating the word of God and the Holy Spirit directed them because the man had received the anointing. They were waiting a hundred of, 120 of them in the upper room and the Holy Spirit came upon them. That's the power of the anointing. And now when he began to speak, he was transformed. He was changed. He had become great. His gifts had become greater. He had become a great man now. And even success was now knocking at the door, waiting for Peter to begin to speak. When he begins to speak, things begin to happen. Child of God, do you need this anointing. I will pray for you today and you will receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I am believing God that the Holy Spirit will come upon you. You will be filled with the Holy Spirit. You will begin to speak in tongues. You will begin to venture in business. You will begin to venture in the marketplace. You will begin to venture in ministry. Now with the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is something you cannot do without. You have to be anointed. You have to be anointed. I am just a normal man without the anointing. If anointing of God reached me right now, I just become a normal man. Remember the prayer of David in Psalms chapter 51. He says, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. In other words, do not take the anointing from me because if you take the anointing from me, even the enemies will overcome me. Even the devil will who, who, who tossed me to and fro. He beseeches God because of, he had backslidden. He prays and repents and asks the Lord not to take away the anointing. Praise the name of Jesus. And I believe the anointing was not taken away, but he was, he was judged. He was uh, spanned. He was punished because of his sin, but the anointing was not taken. His cry, his prayer, his greatest problem was not, the, was not that the kingship would go. No, his greatest problem was if the anointing leaves my life, I'm done. My enemies will get me today. Everything will be done. I will be a useless man. I will do miracles. Why do you think you can make it without the anointing? It is not possible. Even marriage, it is not possible. Even that business, it is not possible. Even that ministry, it is not possible. You need the anointing of the Holy Spirit to give you success. How many doctors are dying of smoking? They tell you not to smoke, but they smoke. 
It is the anointing that will change your life. It is the anointing that will make you a different man. It will change you so that what you speak may be exactly what is inside. Not what you speak is different from what is inside. Child of God, I want to pray for you now. I have directed this message unto you. The three reasons why you need the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the anointing of God. One is it empowers your gift and your talent. It will empower your gift and your talent. And we see that in the life of Saul. It will affect you into greatness. It will affect your greatness. It will remove the greatness that was hidden in you and unveil it. So that people can see a great man. It is the anointing that unveils the greatness in you. The greatness in you can never come out until the anointing is, is poured or anointing comes upon your life. Number three, it affects success. So that whatever you touch to do succeeds. The prophet says, when these things are fulfilled, when you notice that the anointing is upon your life, do as the occasion deserves. For God is with you. You will get success. Just do whatever you want. Just do whatever you can. Just do whatever the occasion serves. If it needs you to preach, preach. If it needs you to pray for them, pray for the people. If it needs you to prophesy, prophesy. If it needs you to compose and write in gospel songs, write. For the Lord is with you and that thing shall succeed. Child of God, you need the anointing. You need the anointing. Almighty God, I read my hands upon my viewer now. I know I have preached your word and then now I want to receive the anointing. The anointing can be transferred through these uh, waves. I pray now as I lift my hand upon them. Receive the anointing. Receive the anointing. Receive the anointing now. Receive the anointing now. Receive the anointing now. Oh, you are shaking. You are being filled. You are feeling fire in your eyes and in your hands and your, in your feet, in your stomach. You are feeling like goosebumps. That's the power of the anointing coming upon you, entering you now. The anointing will come through your face, through your forehead here. The, 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 the anointing of God shall enter through you and you will feel the whole body feeling the anointing. It can enter through the hands. These are openings. Receive it, receive it, receive it in Jesus' mighty name.